Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Core Talk and welcome to In the Thick of It. I'm your host, Cole Michaels, and I'm joined by my co-host, Jeremiah Richardson. Hello, it's me, it's me, I'm back here again. You know, I remember when you guys used to um, review the old ROX episodes, and actually with the other guy that um, was obviously with you doing these reviews, now I got a Super Network gig, and I guess now I'm the full-time reviewer with you, and I'm glad to be back. Now I get to do my first ROX review. Of course, and you are watching us on our new home on Super Network TV, and we are very proud to be here. Today we're going to be watching, well, we're going to be reviewing, rather, ROX Banot 19. So, Banot came live from the Infinite Energy Arena in Duluth, Georgia. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Dalton Crooks was on commentary for the evening, and he, well, when he was good, he was okay. But when he was bad, he was god-awful. Oh, definitely. He had his ups and downs tonight. <laughs> Uh, we will get to that later though. Starting off the show we had Jester versus Jacob Amore. The match starts off very fast paced with Amore running straight at Jester but Jester counters into a German suplex that Amore immediately flips out of both men going counter for counter and pin for pin. We get a nice sequence of arm drags, a few more beautiful counters and Jester manages to connect with a vicious headbutt straight to the mouth of Amore who then rolls out of the ring and sets up Jester perfectly for a suicide dive. Jester goes around to the other side of the ring and puts on his glasses and dives again. Jester with the offense and really uses his bizarre personality to his advantage, biting on more and taunting him after being punched right in the temple. I've got to say, as weird as Jester is, he is one tough son of a bitch. Amor uses his speed and agility to gain the offense, a couple near falls later and Amor goes for what I assume was a wheelbarrow face buster but Jester turns the momentum right against him and catches him with an immensely gorgeous German suplex. This looked amazing. Jester damn near caves in Amor's chest with some brutal elbows, absolutely loses it when Amor kicks out at two. Jester straight up strangles Amor and rams his head into the canvas. After his neck is wrenched like there's no tomorrow and more, gets a nice jawbreaker to make Jester release it. Uh, Jester begs for mercy, but Amor, <laughs> he takes off goggle, uh, the goggles off of Jester's face that he put on earlier. <laughs> Jester loses it, goes for a wild clothesline, but Amor ducks it and uses his superior athleticism to, uh, to come with some amazing combos. Get, uh, he then hits a big drop kick, Jester rolls out. And technically should have won right there because Amor attempted a Sasuke special, which was stated in the rules at the beginning of the show that it is illegal to go for a Sasuke special. Regardless, Jester rolls back in <laughs> and hits a dive of his own. The match, uh, the finishing sequence ended with Amor hitting a Tiger Faint kick on Horokrana for the win. What did you think of this? Kind of had the same aspect as you. Um, I felt like there was a target on uh, Jake Amor's back literally when it saw the obviously the previous injuries from Amor, you know, with the yeah. back tape. You know, I felt like Jester could have capitalized that on more. Uh, you saw when he was, like, more reliant with the more, um, you know, uh, for example, that headbutt that he hit, you yeah. know, in the beginning, you know, it, it got him a bunch of time, you know, and it slowed the pace down for him. You know, that's why I didn't agree, you know, in the in the beginning, why you start off fast pace with somebody, you know, who thrives and skills off the fast pace. No, definitely. You know, so I wasn't really feeling that part from Jester, but I guess when you try to one-up somebody, you know, just to prove that you're the better guy all around um, all around the ring, you know, and try to beat somebody at their own game, so he's impressive, but obviously he came up short. We do see um, this for Rob the Cat as well, actually. But Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the finish, finish kind of um, threw me off a bit, because I'm used to a more going for a shooting star, but uh, yeah. obviously hit it with the Hurricane Rana and actually it spiked Hurricane Rana and then you know um, right into the pin uh, like I said uh, match was really good I gave it a 3 point I was going to give it a 3.5 but then I ended up giving it a 3 because you know obviously the Sasuke special spot you know that, that match could have just been thrown out the window if he would have connected with that and you know it, it would have left the fans really disappointed uh, yeah. so I did give it a 3 out of 5 yeah, overall, I enjoyed this match. It was really well paced. Both men really shined. And I'm also going to give it a 3 out of 5. Uh, up next, we had JP versus Akuma. Firstly, I'd like to say that I absolutely love that both men came down with their own respective championships. Akuma, the Pride Champion, and JP, the Three Lines Champion. Just like the first match, it starts off for you, uh, Fast and Furious Akuma. 
looking for a big boot and again just like the first match it countered with a German suplex although this time it did connect uh, Masters with a beautiful bridge and we got our first two count our first pinfall first two count Masters looking for a Kamara but Akuma gets free didn't last long because Masters connects straight this time with a Kamara locks it and rolls him over Akuma though quickly rolls out of it with an armbar of his own Masters escapes that and then both men on the feet Akuma just screaming at Masters and Masters shouts right back at him both men hit a flurry of strikes with Akuma coming out on top keeping the offense Akuma starts working the arm and it isn't long until Masters regains offense neither man keeps it for long like throughout this match that's a common theme like the offense isn't one sided at all uh, after a little back and forth JP slams Akuma down face first and looks to cave his skull in with some beautifully br uh, brutal knees to the head goes for a cover but it's just a two uh, right to the uh, right to the back and forth JP looks for a guillotine but Akuma counters with a vicious DDT this looked absolutely brutal Akuma looks for a death seal but JP counters with a knee bar this was again this was really cool looking and neither man can keep the other one down JP goes to the top rope and hits a frog splash which was kinda weird to see from me honestly but only get to two count. JP shocked, uh, shocked by this, bangs his head against a turnbuckle, and gets hit with a pal driver. And just when you think it's all said and done, JP kicks out Akuma, spears Masters to the outside of the ring. Both men brawling like it's 1 a.m. on a Saturday night, and the buzzer sounds. Both men are either counted out or DQ'd. I'm not really sure, um, but it, cause it's, it's not really stated. It just says that the match was thrown. Um, Either way, both men brawl to the back, all the way to the back, past gorilla position, and that's the last we see of them. What did you think of this match? Yeah, I was digging the whole, um, I think JP kind of took the um, uh, AOC thing oh, and definitely. brought it in the ROX. It, it might have threw the camera crew off a little bit because I think they're so used to... Um, I think they're so used to, you know, just, you know, pure wrestling matches. And, you know, yeah. when they got this, you know, they were just kind of all over the place, you know. Especially with the transitions and everything. The transitions were, you know, good, flawless, you know. It fit, you know, fit both of, you know, both of them very well, you know. Because uh, Akuma has, you know, kind of almost the same background as JP, you know. And they're both tough son of a bitches. I think oh, that's why, you know, doubt. you see the match. You see the match on paper, you know. And you're just like, oh, hard hitting for sure. And then when you get that, you know, you're just like, ah, oh, great. So this is exactly what we this is exactly what we needed exactly what we wanted. Um, there was a key moment, you know, when um, key moment to me when uh, JP started doing the unprotected knee strikes. Mm. I gotta give it to the production team on that slow motion replay. Oh, that was that was beautiful. fucking deadly, and I like, loved it. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. You know, that's what this what you gotta do to you know get you know JP you know. That's JP style, you know, so you want to embrace that as much as possible so people know the vibe when JP walks into that fucking arena, you know. Um, I, I have to say, though, ever since the launch of Out of Combat, we're seeing a completely different JP. This isn't the, De the, this isn't the Desmond Cruz uh, JP Masters. This is, a, uh, this is a lot more focused. He, he knows what he wants in wrestling right now, and he's coming to get it. <laughs> Yeah. Like this ain't no getting bitched out by the champion. This is I'm gonna bitch out the champion. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so what what do you rate this match? Um, I just felt like the production team let us down with this match. Really, um, like I said, uh, the match is you know nice, and then JP kind of threw me off, you know, because I felt like they should have just stayed with the you know strike after strike, you know, what what uh, what man is gonna give in first. Yeah. But um, obviously the the frog splash from the top and then the power driver just kind of threw it off for me so yes, i'm yeah. going to respectively give it a 2.5 out of 5 just due to the production and then you know they kind of went away from the game plan it's like it's kind of like they had to get reminded that you know we're doing wrestling here yeah you know? yeah i didn't like it so yeah 2.5 uh, oh, out of 5 yeah overall I, I did really like this match it kept the flow of the show going nicely and it was really well done like when rx announced that it was going to be going with this quote-unquote sporty vibe this is exactly what I imagined would get but never got uh, but like you said the frog splash and the power driver really threw me off a little bit so I'm gonna agree with you and give it a nice average 2.5 out of 5 so following this we got our first uh, our third match of the evening rather Miguel Magnifico versus Jamoshi Ali 
and unlike the first two matches, this one starts out with a traditional circle, which was nice to see. But Miguel is cocky and it spikes him as Jamoshi nearly catches him with a crucifix pin. Both men trade in arm drags and both men lock up. One fast paced sequence later and I'm sure after realising Moshi has the edge in the athleticism department, or at least speed department rather, Miguel dictates the pace and just stops Moshi dead in his tracks with a nice armbar. Moshi uses his speed though and gets a little offence but again he's just cut off when Miguel hits a forearm to the back of the head. On a side note, I'd like to say that this is the match that the commentary really started to dip. Some back and forth later though, and Moshi is really using his speed to his advantages, but ultimately Jamoshi gets turned inside out with a discus lariat. This, this was brutal. Miguel hits a spike DDT, but Moshi gets the rope break. Miguel is doing really well to keep to keep Moshi down and slowed down, and then goes for what? Well, as the commentator said, an arm bar. <laughs> <laughs> This this is what I mean. When I said the commentator got shit, <laughs> this is when he got shit. <laughs> Miguel, Miguel though was really really in his pocket at this point, and he ends up nearly stomping the life out of Jamoshi. First stomping the chest and then to the back and the side and just everywhere that he could stomp, he was stomping. Moshi counts count as a discus big boot though and gets a near fall. Jamoshi keeps using that speed, but only, um, but he's only getting two counts. No matter what he's trying, both men go back and forth, and out of nowhere, Miguel locks in the snake bite, and Jamoshi's out cold just drops like a sack of uh, potatoes. What did you think of this? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think Miguel could have, you know, kept working the arm, and you know, just kept, you know, slowing down the pace. But you know, props to Moshi, and you know, props to Miguel. I think Miguel was really trying to get the crowd behind Moshi, but crowd was just, I don't know, they were just, I don't know if they just kind of dozed off a bit, but they, they didn't have any trust behind Moshi in this match. I think it's because Moshi hasn't found his, you know, you know, Moshi's in a different company, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't suit him well. And, um, I think people are just not over what Moshi brings to the table in ROX, you know, I think he needs to be somewhere else. Um, obviously, like I said, um, Moshi did some nice offense too, uh, but, I said the crowd just wasn't getting behind it, and it just wasn't it wasn't feeling it for me. Um, but I do like the finish. I really do like the finish with Miguel. That's how you that's how you really get over a submission because right when he locked oh, yeah. that shit in, bomb over. Even though he did tease it in the you know, he did tease it in the beginning, but oh, you know yeah. he didn't lock it in right. He didn't lock it in right, but you know but, you know once he put him in, you know it was there. And I was hearing that it was Jamoshi's last match in ROX, so this does give him a you know. You know, this, I think that's gonna, add, you know, give him an advantage. You know, I don't think he really fits this um, kind of show. And I, you know, I love Moshi to death. You know, I don't, I don't want him to think that I'm, you know, um, it, it, it's gonna, it's gonna do him favors. And I, I really, truly believe that. Um, yeah, I feel like. Other than that, I did give that match. I, I, I gave that match a three. It, it got the job three, done. But like yeah. I said, the, the crowd really took the piss out of Moshi. You know really took the piss out of Moshi, you know, having any, like, chance against Miguel. Yeah, I feel like Jamoshi has struggled to really find his identity in wrestling. Like, so, the last time we was reviewing ROX before we took a hiatus, which is the time we was talking about at the beginning of this episode, uh, that's when Jamoshi was doing his whole, like, you nuts hang thing, and, like, I feel like he's just really been struggling, ever since, like, he was, like, in true on pro he's been struggling to find who he is and it seems like everywhere he goes like he just never really come into who he is like and i definitely do think it will come like he's a phenomenal wrestler he showed in this match that his agility is was like almost unmatched like but he's just struggling to find himself but overall i thought this match was great but the shit commentary really, really hindered it. Like, I particularly enjoyed Miguel's detecting, uh, detect. Oh, I can't even say the word now. Dictating. There we go. The pace <laughs> <laughs> and the snake bite out of nowhere. Uh, it was phenomenal. It's another strong three out of five. Um, but the co the commentary really, really dipped in this. Like, it's almost like he just stopped caring a little bit. Like, and he'd start like almost talking to himself 
in little bits and he'd start calling moves you're on which which we see at the beginning of this next match Max Halton versus Ikea both men hype up the crowd and then lock up so nice friendly wrestling here no ego just passion for wrestling the commentator calls a couple of arm drags and bars again showing that he's not capable of calling on jours at all uh, Halton comes out of the opening on top though Yukita rolls to the outside and Max is about to dive but Yukita stops it. Max plays for the crowd and lets him back in nice and clean. Both men circle and the mayor of Chop City shows exactly why he gained that nickname and then the commentator taps. The commentator literally tapped out on commentary. <laughs> for God's sake. Like, ah, man. Anyways. <laughs> so more chops from Halton. And the last one is way too advertised because you keep your counting is it with a nice elbow. But Max is quick to take back the offense, wrestling like he's got something to prove. Before long though, Yukita takes control with a nice couple kick combinations. Max rolls to the outside and Kita flips to the outside and throws Max back into the ring. Max drags himself against the corner, only to be met with a brutal drop kick from Yukita, but doesn't keep Max down for long because he immediately comes right back with at Yukita with a nice corner, face grip, big boot. Both men reverse in suplexes. And Yukita gets the Falcon Arrow. A little back and forth, Yukita gets a nice Dragon Sleeper, but Max counters. Some more back and forth, and Yukita finally picks up the win. See, the, the ending of the match came out of nowhere, like, a little bit. Like, I feel like both men were, like, only halfway through. But what did you think of this match? Yeah, I see it this almost the same way you do. Um, I love the one-upsmanship in this match. I felt like this oh, yeah. was a match that was kind of different from the rest of them. Uh, it really kind of stood out because, you know, they did bring a bit of comedy to get the crowd into it. Um, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on the same ballpark as you. Um, I say the production, too, with, the, <laughs> with Max's theme song not playing. That was yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was just shared from ROX or not, but yeah, it was weird. Uh, yeah, it was just a bunch of one-upsmanship that I liked, you know, and obviously these guys kind of share the same wrestling style, you know, so it was just a matter of um, who was just going to be the better man tonight, and I did hear that it was Max Charlton's last match. Uh, there's a lot of occurring theme with this, uh, yeah. this kind of stuff, too. That a bunch of... Um, last matches here in ROX. Maybe I think it's just because um, they're kind of overstacked with the roster and I feel like they're just going to um, start limiting. But I, I don't think you should get rid of somebody like Max. You know, Max has been there since day one. You know, that's somebody you build around and I don't think I don't think that's somebody you just... Uh, unless he just was just like, yo, I, I don't think I fit here. You know, and I don't think he does either. But um, I, I don't want to say that Max just came into this match just showed up at the paycheck because I do kind of agree that the... The, I wouldn't say the finish was sudden because it was it was two deadly moves back to back. Yeah, you know, those yeah. are two moves that can take out anybody. You know, That's but true. you just I, I think I think since Max has been in ROX, he's been known to take people to the limit no matter who they are. And so when you when you see like six minutes left on the timer and then you know that Max is already getting pinned and you know it's just like wow, uh, it just kind of caught me off guard. And um, I would have thought that you know since Max has been there for a long time that he would have got a better send off with the crowd. But oh, yeah, it seemed yeah. like nobody cared and um, they just went on with their day. Um, this match right here, I did give a solid three out of five. Like I said, I did like the um, I did like the whole back and forth with both of these. You know, just both of them. I'm a big fan of both of them and can't wait to see what else they're gonna do in the future. Yeah, the, yeah. Overall, for me, this match was fun. <laughs> The back and forth was, was definitely my favorite aspects of the match. Like neither man kept the control for long, because um, they just the new this like like you said they wrestled the same style. They knew exactly what they were gonna do because it's what they do themselves. But as you say, considering how much Max has done for our ex, I'd have liked a better send off. But again, I've got to agree with you with the star rating with another three out of five. Um, but then. <laughs> Straight, um, straight away from three or fives though. The next match: Tyreek Carter versus Arashi Ray. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, right, the match starts with Arashi running straight for Tyreek. Again, not not too, uh, not too different from what we've seen uh, in the first two matches of the show. But Tyreek runs out with the ring and flexes to the crowd. This was cool. Uh, 
But then he keeps taunting Orochi and teases getting back in the ring. Uh, Orochi has enough though and tries to run around the ring to Tariq but gets met with a nice low drop kick. After some offense, Tariq throws Orochi against the steel post and then back into the ring and keeps the offense going and going and going and going. He tees an outside dive but then just throws Orochi against the announcer's table and then onto the ring apron. Back into the ring now and the final boss is definitely on the easy setting. Um, Tariq keeps going. <laughs> Tariq keeps going at the knees of Orochi. This was cool. Uh, starting to make a little bit more sense with his uh, offense now. Uh, going at the knees with some nice submissions. Orochi tried to take the offense but is just immediately shut down. We're now halfway through the time limit of this match, and I don't think Oreshi has hit a single move. But wait, I spoke too soon. Uh, he counters Tyreek, and after a little back and forth, Oreshi nails Tyreek with a nice DDT. Oreshi uses his speed and agility against Tyreek and gets a two count. Some more back and forth, some pretty nice counters from both men actually. And then Tyreek hits a low blow and gets himself DQ'd. What did you think of this match? Yeah, I mean, I kind of see it the same here. I was thinking the final boss was looking like the <laughs> weakest link in this match. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I am going to give him an excuse for it. And, um, you know, you saw the whole, um, I don't know if you watched it personally, um, but I think he was obviously in an unsanctioned match or a death match. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. JC Pulley. Previously, yeah, previously, not too long ago. So, um, the only thing is, is with his entrance, though, he didn't tend to sell the injuries, you know? He didn't look hurt, so, you know, I was just like, all right, so we're... Uh, but, obviously, going into the match, you know, you saw that he was really, really hurt, you know? Like, obviously, he just wasn't there, you know? But um, I think they should have just saved... If they were just going to do that, they should have just saved Arashi for another time. Because, like oh, I said, yeah. they, have a stacked ro they have a stacked roster, so, you know, they could have threw anybody in there against Tyreek, and they would have got a better quality, you know, better yeah. quality match out of this, because, obviously, Arashi was just too hurt. Um, Rashi was just way too hurt you know he, he couldn't he, uh, but there was some um, I think Rashi you know I think the adrenaline finally kicked in for him you know he did come up with some offense and then, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you know once Tyreek you know I guess once Rashi was just too fast for Tyreek um, Tyreek just took the easy way out and did a low blow also there's a commentator for this match bad um, yeah. uh, only reason why is because like Tyree Carter isn't a proper technician, you know. So, uh, so he's doing like stretch moves, you know, obviously to work on Arashi's leg, which is smart, you know. So, um, only thing is, is just the, you know, the commentary is just like he's really being like really extra with it, you know. And if he's this extra with somebody that's not a technician, imagine him in a Namo match. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what I'm tried. saying? Like, imagine him in a Namo match. The, the Namo thrives with that shit. <laughs> so I mean, he, he needs to he needs to get out of it. He needs to. Um, he needs to get his shit together if they're going to keep him there because uh, that's, that's not the worst that he's ever seen. Uh, but star rating wise, I'm giving this match. Uh, I was going to give it. I have to give it a two. Uh, I have and to two? give it a two. We have to okay. steer away from the threes. Um, this, th this match really took the piss out the crowd. Took the piss out the crowd and it left the main event having to, you know, step up their game if they're going to get this show above, you know get this show to the you know, obviously the main event is um if the crowd is dead you know they obviously the main event is gonna have to do its job even more you know what i'm saying it doesn't take yeah. any it takes it puts more pressure on the main event to be even better yeah um, overall like i said i just i didn't like this the first half of the match was near unwatchable Arashi not getting any offense for seven minutes mixed with a piss poor commenter makes this for me uh 1.5 out of five, I liked most of the second half, but the low blow for me prevented it from being a two out of five. Um, Arashi is usually a lot better than this, but to call yourself the final boss and then give a, a performance like this, it, it's a no from me, honestly. Um, like, like I say, he's usually a lot better than this, but this just wasn't it for me. Um, and like you say, a match as bad as this really does put pressure on the main event, and luckily it hit so for the main <laughs> event which was the the sixth match and it like I said the main event Justin Harris versus Vogan 
the match starts with two very different mindsets. You see Justin Harris is pumped, he's bouncing around like an animal ready to attack and Vogan well Vogan is laid across the top rope, seemingly without a care in the world. Both men circle and lock up. Vogan almost instantly backs him against the ropes, but it's a clean break. Another circle and both men go hold for hold. Vogan though, the better wrestler, as he takes Justin Harris down and a helicopter spin around and Vogan with a taunt. Which is what the commentator did there. Um, a bunch of taunting from Vogan this match. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, for the lack of a better word, wonderful. <laughs> Harris though is back to his feet and he's asking for more. You'll see this throughout the match from Harris. He's just constantly begging, like begging for more and more. Like he just won't stay down. But another lockup and again, uh, hold for hold. With Harris this time with a takedown and a helicopter spin of his own and then copying Vogan with a taunt. Both men sizing each other up, ready to lock up again, and a gut kick from Vogan. Now Vogan is thrown against the ropes, Harris just leaping over Vogan, but he sees this coming and he outsmarts him and escapes out the ring. Justin Harris attempts an outside dive and Vogan saw it coming again, and Harris hits a whole lot of nothing. Vogan with a baseball slide and an elbow from the top rope to a standing Justin Harris, and the commentator says, Nothing flashy about Vogan. I don't know if he was referring to the move or the character himself because if he's referring to Vogan, everything is flashy about Vogan. Um, <laughs> but it's whatever. Um, so Harris recovers though, and as Vogan's trying to get back into the ring, and just straight takes that offense as quick as he can. An STF is Vogan crawling for the to uh, for the rope break, which he gets. Harris though stays on top of this match. He's looking to wear down Vogan with a sleeper variation, but Vogan fights his way out. A couple of counters later, and Harris is pushed to the outside off of the top rope. This looks up. Oh, this looks horrible. The way Harris landed looks like he could have definitely hurt something. Um, Vogan knows he's got him hurt too. Vogan has, has Harris exactly where he wants him. His wrestling style is just exactly where it needs to be at this point. You can just sense the confidence radiating off of Vogan. A whip to the corner and a chop attempt leads to Harris getting a counter though with a huge springboard knee just absolutely nailing Vogan for possibly at this point the closest count of the night. Almost a three. Some more back and forth uh, back and forth and Vogan with a ref assisted suplex neck breaker. <laughs> um, the ref was confused. <laughs> Harris trying his hardest to take back control but Vogan keep just he has an answer for everything. A figure four, and Harris tends it up over and crawls out. A huge dead man's eye from Vogan nearly gets the three. Both men just giving everything they have. At this point, Vogan must be wondering what it's going to take to end Harris and put him away. But at the end of the day, it's Harris that puts himself away. When he puts everything he has into a pale kick, and Vogan just falls right on top of him for the one, two, three. What did you think of this match? <laughs> that that finish was very very unique, and I <laughs> that was great. Um, but yeah, I, the, the the match itself was um, match itself was kind of like in the same format as the others, but obviously added you know better heel elements from Vogan because I think Vogan yeah. just is just that damn good. Um, obviously, though the I think this was like a. This is like an open weight match, don't you think? Because I think Vogan camps at the lightweight division, and then Harris camps at the heavyweight division. And I think so, so the fact that, and so the fact that Vogan, you know, Vogan camps in the light heavyweight division, and then Harris camps at the heavyweight division. The fact that Vogan, Vogan is taking it to the heavyweight, you know, just has a has has an answer for everything that Harris is doing in this match. You know, I find that very very impressive, and I think Vogan, if Vogan's that confidence, if you know, I think that should boost. Vogan's confidence even more and I think he could do a nice transition to go into the heavyweight division yeah I could definitely see him um, bulking up that little bit and moving over to the um, what do you rate this match uh, yeah I give it a I'm sitting at a 3.5 or a 4 but mm. obviously I think just you know Vogan doing what he Vogan doing what he does you know and you know, the unique spot with the ref and then the unique spot with the finish really enjoyed it and yeah. I think 
I, I, obviously, I think the crowd pop for it too. And I and I say this, you keep putting Harris in these situations, you know, where you know the crowd gets behind him, and he's obviously a fan favorite now because I remember when he took the fight with Desmond. He took the fight with Desmond, you know, he was just trying every, you know, every every way to get the advantage on Desmond, you know, if it resorted to a low blow, you know. Yeah. But then people, just people, I think respect that, you know, he's doing everything he can, you know, to. You know, he's doing everything he can, obviously, with the promos back in the day that he was saying that he obviously wasn't getting used. Now he's getting an opportunity to be used, and now he's just, you know, knocking it out the damn park. And um, if Harris keeps getting put in these situations, he's obviously going to win one sooner or later. And when he does, it's not going to shock me because, you know, he's he's obviously been in the situation before. And I think I'm really rooting for Harris. You know, I feel like if this is the, you know, if this is the baby face star that they're going to push, they really need to, you know, they really need to do it with him. And get a serious win soon. Well, yeah, like I said, it wasn't Vogan that beat Harris. Technically, Harris beat himself. It was that Pele kick that that beat him. Now, if he can figure out uh, to put that energy into hitting something that's not going to take everything out of him like that, then he could have. He could definitely could have beat Vogan. Vogan could have been out for that at that point. But overall, this match for me was undoubtedly the best match on the card I was invested the whole way through Bogan is well for lack of a better term wonderful and Harris is going to be something big for me this is a 4 out of 5 uh, I just really enjoyed it the, the the character work from Vogan and Justin Harris was perfect what did you think of the show overall I think um, I think the production the the production can use a little bit of work. Um, I think they're kind of just using the. There's uh, I want to say it's a transition into the tail of the tape, and it's like blue, a blue R O X logo, and it just kind of threw me off. Like I feel like they need to stick with you know, obviously one you know this, yeah. you know quit being open. I feel like it's that that's just um, I didn't really like that logo. That's not their signature logo. I think they should steer away from that. Um, but obviously this is actually, ROX is still one of the most, like, you know, production-wise, you know, the, they're, they're, they're top-notch, you know, they're always top-notch, oh, yeah. but they're not consistent on what they want, they're always changing their mind, just like as much as they change their damn intros, I think yeah. they go, I think they go a fucking intro every episode, you know, I think that needs to stop. I'm pretty you know, sure there's five in, to, intros between every episode at this point. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then, you know, that's another thing too, you know, when you're, when when you have a show like this, when you have a show like this, and obviously, you know, they, they're they respected because they've been in the game for a while. Been in the game for a while, you know, they need to be open to advertising more shit. You know, like, you know, help, help other people out because they were they were that, they, they were once those people, you know. Yeah. And they just finally made it to the top, you know, so I feel like they need to do that, you know, with other shows, you know, get, get other shows off the map. But at the end of the day, it's all competition and everything, so I do see why they do what they do. Yeah. Um. And I think, you know, obviously common commentary just wasn't a hit it was hit or miss, you know, and commentary just kinda made this match uh made everything just uh production wise that that put a big dent in the production area. Um uh, obviously there's one, one little side note that I wanna say here and when we when we criticize people and you know, critique you, you know, you can have 20 bad matches, but if you have that one good match, you know, you, we're going to praise it, you know, I don't want you yeah. to think that we're, I don't want you to think that me, me or, you know, the person sitting next to me are just trying to bury people because we're not, you know, because no, no, to, to be in this business, you know, you, you got to be honest and you got to not be, you know, you got to be honest and unbiased, you know, and, you know, if, if we say something, you know, if we say something, I hope we take it. You know, because we're not preying on anybody's downfall here. Uh, of you, obviously, people want honesty, so if they want honesty, they need to be able to take it too. That's all I have to say here. I think production, though, with the whole show, uh, another three out of five. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, Arabex is consistently one of, if not the best shows, like consistently wise. Um, it's obviously it's got the biggest fan base out of uh, any of the other eight shows in the wrestling industry today um, and it's phenomenal to see the growth of the show uh, like I said the, some of the matches uh, were better than others but there was only really one bad match um, per se and yeah the commentator definitely let the whole show down in aspects but 
overall I enjoyed it. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Did you agree with us or did you disagree with us? Let us know at Core Talk on Twitter. Links to ArrowX and the Super Network socials will be in the description. As always, I've been Cole Michaels, and this was in the thick of it.